Welcome back to the channel. Songs from the Rural Room is the channel. Dahi is my name here in Belgium, Irish singer songwriter. Great to have you with us. Thank you very much. Please hit that subscribe button and give the old video a thumbs up. Uh, this is a, a little thing called Two Heads, One Heart, where I get to talk uh, with singer songwriters and music industry professionals, etc., etc., and uh, a little kind of a catch up, see what they're up to, see what they've been doing, all that jazz. And tonight, uh, from Finland, via Dublin and over to Belgium. It's great to have him with us here. JP Colio, hello. How you doing? How you doing, Dai? Welcome. Did I did I did I say that name correctly? That, that close is, enough. Is it is it is it Colio? <laughs> Colio, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, Colio. Well it's very very nice to, to finally hook up with you and and, and, and and meet you virtually anyway. Um yeah. JP, you you've been to Belgium before, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh but I want to take, take you back to the uh, Finnish days, Helsinki. You hail yep. from, yep. and um, you 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 left Helsinki for for Ireland. You were saying how many years ago now? It was in 1996, so 27 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> like like at this point, yeah. at this point, I spent most of my life here. So. <laughs> yeah. When you think of it, wow. That, that was it must have been a big jump. But, but take me back to the Helsinki days then before you came out to Dublin. Yeah. I assume I may right in assuming that you came to Ireland to follow the, the music dream. Y yeah. As such. Uh, well, yeah, it, it was a part of it. Like it, there was a there's a big part of it that I kind of felt like the need to get out of Finland and just, just to mm. see see other places. And like I mean, I mean I, my my father used to be a long haul truck driver, so uh I kind of travelling was always in my blood and I uh, travelled with him quite a lot when I was a kid and I kind of had the desire to go and experience the living abroad as well but at the same time I was, I was kind of stuck in Finland there wasn't anything I, I didn't have any kind of purpose to do anything and at, at back in those days the music scene in Finland was uh, it's very internal there wasn't much of going on like nobody traveling abroad or Oh. You know, getting out of Ireland, it was getting out of Finland to, to actually perform on international national stage was like unheard of at the time. And uh, then yeah. I came, came to Dublin, and um, you know, Dublin was a hotbed at the time of like just and and it was it was kind of I came I think right at the right time that the the Temple Bar thing was it was a big thing already, but it hadn't turned into as let's call it industrialized as it has now uh, mm. so th there was a lot of there was a lot of good music happening in temple bar at the time and uh, it yeah. was a very exciting time to arrive here and, and see that scene at the time of course of course or oh, were you were you actively involved in any kind of music scene in, in finland before you came out were you in bands were you doing a solo yeah. thing at the time then yeah no i was i was playing with bands like i mean i i've been playing since i was i don't know I've been gigging since I was like 14 or 15 or something, 14, mm -hmm. I think. And uh, I used to, it's actually a funny story, I used to organize the school tours um, with the band. So we, we just go to all the, all the local schools and ask them, can we come and play? Um, and then we take a week off from the school and go and play gigs in different schools. And then we go to the principal in our school and we say, like, look, we got this tour book. And she's kind of like, well, I kind of have to let you go, don't I? <laughs> It's like, yeah, yeah. Wake, up, wake up school, <laughs> cool. play music. Yeah, nice go. one, nice way to get off school. <laughs> yeah. Wow, they allowed us. That's really great. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that that was that was a cool one. So then so then Dublin happened and uh so you you were just doing the solo thing. Um songwriting was, was a big part of your life at that stage or that come it, later? It, it had been a massive part of my life before, but then when I came yeah. here, I think I think there was an element of the like the language thing at that stage because I still kind of felt very much that it wasn't my English wasn't my first language and I, I didn't have the confidence at that point to be pursuing the songwriting as much uh, within, within here you know um, but I mean that took a couple of years and then I was back and the, the, the internal burn and desire to write songs came back and, and then it came back even stronger than it ever was um, yeah yeah I mean, it's. I think it's Ralph Murphy. Uh, I don't know. Do you, have you read Ralph Murphy? I remember Ralph Murphy. Yeah, yeah from the International book. Bar and all that scene. Yeah, he um, his book. He he talks about um, that like the the recipe for a good songwriter is is like a, a little bit of a loner. Um, 
has a desperate need to communicate and a tiny bit dyslexic. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I, I kind of, I kind of fit it into all of those categories. Uh, so, um, yeah, songwriting has been a very cool, a, a massive, massive part of my life all the way through. And, and, still is today like it's it's if, if oh it's yeah it sure yeah sure is i mean you 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 know i was following you on on social media for a long time and you know the instagram thing took off and you you were saying that uh we were talking about youtube earlier earlier on as well and uh, that's played a big part in 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 your musical yeah absolutely. journey has it tell us a bit about that because you've been doing vlogs you've been all kinds of stuff yeah you know, well, well i i kind of like i i, I was a little bit involved in marketing um, with this uh, uh, Irish uh, music technology company called Melocity. And kind of through that, it, it, it taught me to kind of experiment as much as I can. And, and, and I do, do it with music all the time. And um, like, we can, we can get into a rant about how social media can be a bad thing. But like, to me, it's just a tool. And if you treat it as that, it can be very, very powerful. And like, I, I've had a few people recently uh, talk to me about that how things were easier back in the day, and I'm going like, no, they weren't. Like I, I had a, I made a cassette, and you know the studio time cost more than my current studio setup cost, and uh, yeah. and uh, like trying to get that to somebody in the next town was a big deal, and now I can get my music on a Spotify and globally on distributed, world, like, you know? stage. yeah, um, mm -hmm. and like when when and have like. The, it it people have uh, I think very unrealistic expectation of social media that it, it will do the job for you, which it doesn't. And I think it comes down to that, like 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 any kind of marketing or any kind of uh, songwriting really is. Uh, it comes down to storytelling. If you, if you're able to tell your story uh, well enough, um, that's when it becomes interesting to other people, and that's when they want to yeah. hear your story and and uh, and like. It's easy not to recognize your own story, but we all have a story, and it's a, it's yes. a unique story, you know. So, um, yeah, no, same. To, yes, exactly. And I, I mean, of course, at, as a... at the back of that, like I, I did a lot of experimenting in um, on a YouTube, like not 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 early, but like reasonably early, I'd say. Um, I, I I was uploading some videos there back in like two thousand and ten. Um, but I didn't have the equipment at the time, like 2010 video editing, uh, unless you had a Mac uh, on a PC was a uh, hard work. Very, 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 very slow puzzle. <laughs> so it wasn't very inspiring. Okay. Um, but then no. like, then we, then we got to 2013, 2014, um, the technology came up a lot. So that, at that point I kind of mm. started messing around more with it. I did um, videos here and there, different kind of stuff. Um, not not very good ones, but just something that, you know, I, I try to learn as much as I can while I do it. Um, yes, yeah, so that was me. Yeah, yeah. And then then I got into, I, I saw a few other people doing the daily vlog kind of thing, and I said, like, okay, let's try some of this. And I, and I started with a, like a reasonable schedule, and then it pushed into full time schedule of seven days a week, and uh, that lasted. I think I did about well over five hundred vlogs. Wow, and, seven days a week. Yeah, and uh, that it literally led to a burnout at the end, and and you get to a point. Yeah, where, that's a lot. Yeah, like I mean, that you kind of doing them for the sake of doing at that point. You know, it's not even like you have a great idea every day. It's just like I have to put something out. So there's a lot of um, there's some blogs that just they're not. I, I'm not very confident on the content of them. That it, it's it's it has a very big purpose, and you can see the numbers straight away. And then other blogs that done extremely well um but yeah it, it's it's something that i'll, I'll definitely um i i, I want to get and back that, into i want to get back into it now but i'm gonna be doing it in a lot more careful schedule like it'd be it'd be you know maybe twice a month or something like that and and you know give me more time to think about the content of it yeah, absolutely. I want to just say hello quickly there to uh, yeah. guitar Chris in Germany. Nice to have you with us, uh, Chris, and Anita, <coughs> Anita uh, Ovenstad in Oslo, Norway as well. Songwriting and and Shanna Key, part of the same art, she says with a smiley yeah. face. Yeah, storytelling, <clears throat> a big part of it. But you were you were talking about <clears throat> you were you were saying about you know each of us having having our own stories, and I suppose well for me, I don't know if you would agree with it, but 
sometimes I, I would start uh, writing a song uh, which is kind of rooted in my story. Yeah. But then, then it kind of drifts away to somebody else's or you, what I would like to call Hollywoodize the, the ending or you, absolutely, absolutely. You, you, you know, you, you do that in your own writing, you know, no, that it's try to explain it to younger songwriters that it doesn't have to be word for word autobiographical. It can, oh, that can be the spark. Not. You've absolutely. done that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think, I think you hit a nail in the head in there that I think it very often root, it's rooted in a personal, it's not necessarily even, it doesn't even have to be experienced, but emotion. There's some sort of personal yeah. emotion that you have felt and you start writing around that. Uh, and, but then also, also another thing that I've, like, I've learned over the years is um, people don't really want to come and see a gig of you moaning about your miserable life for a couple of hours. You kind of have to start, yeah, you have to start thinking about it from the perspective of the listener. So very often yeah. I, I look at the song and, and I'm, I, I, it, again, it starts from something that I that I've experienced, and I, and I think, that, okay, some people might be able to relate to this feeling or this story. And then I put the the, the listener into the, into, the, into the front seat of the story, which then makes yes. it a lot more interesting for them. That's very true. You you almost, I mean, that's what makes a great song. Again, talking yeah. about especially hit songwriters. I heard maybe it was Ralph Murphy or somebody else who said the same thing that if you can if you can sing somebody's life to them yeah exactly and that's when you know you've written a, a hit song um so that's it you have to as you said start with the, with an emotion that affects you but can does the song eventually end up relating you know can other people end up relating to the song and i think yeah. that's that's the craft isn't it there's a there's um actually there's another very much funny story and you, you're probably gonna start seeing a pattern here of of things that i do <laughs> but but back in um i think it was 2013 at the, the towards the end of 2013 because um I, as we mentioned I, I play in another band called slitter um and i end up doing a lot of the booking and the promotional stuff for it and and when the summer is over and the festivals are done you get to the point of the october november you, you, you sit on the front of the computer and you just it, it it literally becomes like an office job for a couple of months and uh um, yeah. It's it, particularly that year. It was bugging me that I I just didn't have the time to go and write music, and uh, so I set up a challenge that that the fifty two song challenge for myself. So for for the following year, I decided to write a, like a song every week. And Heard I, both I, a song a week, put, yeah. Put put it out some some sort of shape form. So yeah. I ended up recording uh, six albums on Spotify, um, and then I continued in the band camp for a while. So I did about nearly three years of That's crazy. Every, song every week and uh but well, it, but it's but it's an interesting thing and it, it like it's it's funny when you, when you break it down but you kind of go like you do something over and over and over again you get better at it yeah and people think of what's, what's what's the secret it's like that's the secret you do it do it over and over again you know? <laughs> yeah so the most of i mean you 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 literally wrote and, and recorded these in whatever format and put them out Mm -hmm. as as was as is without yeah. editing them too too much just just like put them out put them out put them out absolutely, absolutely. did you go back do you do you, do you perform or did you re-record any of those songs or um, you know well, well if there's six albums worth i mean you must have yeah. do you go back and say this is this is good from this song or yeah you know sh surely or maybe you had six albums of completely completed songs that you thought were awesome well what they no well i wouldn't say they're awesome like uh, again the the, the recording process got better the further I got along on that that route as well. Again, oh, but from a writing point, I mean, yeah, from yeah. a writing point. But yeah. um, I I did um, like there there's definitely there's a there's a good solid chunk of songs there that I still play every gig, and um, I'm actually been thinking about that like literally doing it in the next month or so. I just have to find the the right place to do it here in Dublin. Um, because because we're playing with our friends here, and you know the songs over time they they do evolve and they kind of take the life of their own. And uh, I really like to capture like a handful of like albums worth of, of those like kind of the yeah. the ones that stuck with me to a, to a new versions of them and with the musicians that I've been playing here in Dublin. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, I think I think it'd be a really nice capture of, of that. And I mean that's like what, what I actually wanted to talk a little bit about is that like I have a. A, a new album um 
pretty much done. It's it, there's a, there's a couple of polishing things that needs to happen, and but those polishing things seems to be taking a, a very very long time. Um, mm-hmm. But that's that's as you know that's the nature of it. And Part of process. That, yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> I was hoping to get the album out on the spring, um, but the more I try to rush it, the more I, I think it. it it, it seems like a bad idea. I'm, I'm kind of like, okay, let's just take our time with it because I'm very happy with the album, and so make make it the best I can. And uh, mm. so it might be, it might I might have to push that until after summer because summer is not exactly the best time to launch anything. Um, and hopefully, that's why I'd like to record those songs here in Dublin, and because they'd be something that I I can actually get out reasonably fast. Um, and yep. I would really very much like them to be kind of live sounding because that's how i've been hearing them for the past few years um oh yeah so hopefully i can i can release some of those songs uh, during the spring um and keep people yeah the music you know and will you, yeah and, and when you say release will you will you do this like on a on a, on a physical disc or are you talking about just just all, always digital or how do you like to roll with that I haven't. I, yeah, I, I have. I've, with Slitter, we do always do a physical product because we do a lot of the festivals. I haven't done my own stuff on physical product yet, but like when, okay. when the when the new album comes out, that's definitely going to be a physical product. Um, but I'm kind of looking in more and more at the idea of it, like making some sort of a package of the, some of the older stuff as well. And and if, if if I if I record this, I'll definitely make some sort of run of it. I'm not sure how big run, but I mean some sort of run because I mean I. I kind of noticed. I don't know if, if you have noticed any any changes in this, but like before the, this uh, famous pandemic, uh, the couple of years before that, the CD sales were like I think to me they were at their rock bottom. But after mm. the pandemic, I have noticed there's been a little bit more interest on even on CDs. I know vinyl is doing well, but I mean that's also a, for independent artists uh, a lot more expensive yeah. process. But sure. even the CDs, like it, it, it kind of feels like people want some sort of physical product again, and you know, yeah, it, maybe, it, maybe it's, so. It's not for everybody, but like for the ones that do want it, to, you know, I, yeah, I would like to be able to offer that. Yeah, know? it'd be nice. It'd be nice. I think, yeah, there is a. a I think they're beginning to realize there's there's a something palpable mm. has a, has a lot. You know, we can look to your little photographs or even just yeah. the lyrics, just to have something in the hand. And that's of course that's old school. That's where we we come yeah. we're coming from in that uh, from that perspective, and that's how we've always pretty much uh, you, you know bought our music. It had to be a, a vinyl or a CD or cassette even. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and I think I, yeah nowadays, as you said, it's all it kind of it's it's digital. It's Spotify. It's 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 gone sort of the other end of the spectrum. But Absolutely. I'm hoping vinyl. It's nice to see vinyl kind of raising the head again and kind of going people yeah. want this as you said more expensive to do but but it's really it's really nice um and i hope i hope maybe it'll come back at least maybe uh among some of the uh, the our generation or the collectors you know who want these things absolutely i wanted to ask you about slitter because um i i, I for some reason completely not connected you to the band at all. A new slitter, <laughs> new you, a new slitter, but yeah. not <laughs> for some reason. And uh, you were you were in Belgium, was it last summer or summer before you, you played um, Maxi Folk here? Two, in Belgium 2000, 2019, 2019, and it was, oh, last, it was our last, our uh, last performance outside of uh, Ireland before the pandemic hit. Poor Ev shut down. Wow. Yeah. And uh, was that your first time over here, or had you been? Oh over? God, no! Oh God, oh. No. we used to play. Um, you're gonna, you can probably know this person. Uh, we used to play in a mad old pub in Kortrijk. Does it ring a bell? A mad old pub in Kortrijk. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know Foley's or some. Was it, no, was it, it was an it was Irish bar? Por- it was. It was also called Porter House. Um, it was the Porter House in Kortrijk. Is that even still going? I don't know. I, I have, I have no idea. Um, no, but the owner, owner was a, um, he was a character and a half. He he was a, <laughs> um, he yeah he 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 definitely had a Irish roots in Galway. But I mean, like he's also um, very much English accent. Um, yeah, he 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 was a, he was a wild 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 man. But he for some reason liked Slitter a lot, and we used to stop over there every time we were coming to Europe um, yeah. to gigs and uh, 
we played a few different festivals over the years there as well. Um, not as much as we would like to, obviously. Um, but there was a one festival, I can't remember the name of it now, that we did, that they specifically organized the festival just for 10 years. Um, and they, they made the decision from get-go that they, they're going to organize this f- festival for 10 years, and then they're going to stop. And, and it, it was a very, very successful um, kind of circus tent um, set up. And I can't remember the name of it now. Yeah. Then, then we we played we played a few different places there over the years. We played um, in Antwerp and in a, they had the folk club there. That was a really nice gig. Uh, we played in um, uh, back in the day when the Dronuter they I still had that folk club down there as well. We played there. Um, yeah, quite a few good ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. But really well, for people, ones. yeah, people who may not know, I, I have a link. Uh, to the Slitter yeah. uh, page. Slitter are a three-piece Celtic rock outfit. So you have your songwriter yeah. thing going on, and that's mainly mainly solo, I suppose, with, with the other yeah. musician. Do you, do you do you overlap? I mean, you 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 bring some of your own songs to the Slitter oh, no, show. I, I very probably. much overlap. I, I write a big chunk of Slitter's material. Mm. Um, yeah. But but it, it's also, you know, again, it's almost like putting on a different hat. You know, you, you become a different yeah. char- character when you write for Slitter. Um and like because or because perform people, with them, yeah, yeah, and I like I mean, look when when um, when I write for Slitter, it's it's it, it's it, it, it's a, it's a such an identity at this point. The whole band together that like it is you write for the band and for the other guys as well. Oh. It's not just you, yeah, um, and you very much kind of I keep that in mind. Yeah, yep. I just mentioned who's in the band as well. Give them a shout out there. Oh yeah, yeah. Watching. There's a, there's a Ray McCormick. Uh, he it, it's a it's a bizarre setup, and it's one of those that we struggle to explain to festivals that haven't seen us before. Um, so Ray plays Ellen pipes and whistle, and he sings as well. Um, me and kind of Ray share the, the the lead singing duties, and then Des plays drums, and I play okay. acoustic I guitar. Are... Sorry, are we here? I think I lost you there for a second. You were, hold on, just come yeah. back. Oh, uh, you're frozen. Yeah. Uh, technology. Yeah, just once I get you back, you were saying that it was kind of a, a bizarre setup. Yeah. Um, yeah, take it from there if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, so uh, there's Ray McCormick. He plays whistle and Ilan pipes and he sings. And we kind of share the singing duties between the two of us. And then Des Gorvin, he's a drummer. Um, and he's a very unique style of drummer as well. He's a very um, a lot of jazz based drumming there, but kind of as dr- jazz drummers dr- go, probably a little bit heavy handed, a uh, bit, bit harder than your normal uh, jazz drummers would be. And uh, and then me on a guitar. Now I lost you. I I think I'm still alive. I think I've only lost you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we lost each other. <laughs> I might have to go back and do some serious editing. You know, I, I, can, I can see, I can see, because I have that on the screen here, and I, I, I don't think I, I, I think I didn't disappear at all. <laughs> but you froze. <laughs> I know. I was, I was fearing this would happen, but yeah, these things happen. Uh... I don't know what anybody on the chat there. Let us know if we're if it's uh, connected or disconnected, folks. Let us know in the in the chat if you would. We can probably salvage it in the edit later on, but uh, we 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 shall see if I get. I, I, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. <laughs> this is just one of those things. But yeah, uh, what, what 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 we find difficult is like because it's only three piece. It's hard for people to imagine. The, how big the sound is and when they actually yeah. hear us on a festival they're always surprised like oh, how can three people sound so big um, and I think the big reason for it is the fact that there's only three of us so we actually have a space for every instrument in the sound we're not overlapping but we cover that everybody covers their own ground as big as we can and it, and it's a very very powerful sound and it, it's um I always I describe it. It's, it's like it's, it's <laughs> you do it's make like a good, a, yeah. It's like it's like um, it's like driving a car so fast that you can barely control it when you play with them. It's like uh, 
you know, it, it's yeah. it's kind of starting to take you over, and it's just kind of adrenaline kicks in, and it's a machine. Yeah, it really is. It's you make a very big sound uh, yeah. for for just three of you. Um, so I can I can I can definitely understand the the appeal. The quality is very high, and uh, yeah, it, it sure it sure is really really good. And um, yeah, glad you're getting some work. And, and uh, have you got stuff? In a book for this summer or anything going on? Yeah, with the band so or? far we've we've only uh, gone to Czech Republic, um, but you know it's, it's still early days. You never know. Um, we're there for a couple of festivals and then a couple of club gigs, and so that's the plan for so far. Um, we shall see if we're going to expand on that or not. Um, if the right offers comes along. Uh, have, weirdly enough, like, we had we had a we had a festival booked for UK, and and, and I hope this is not going to be a thing. Um, but they said that like they had to seriously reduce their uh, budgets because of the the cost of electricity, and they they can only take local bands. When you absolutely, uh, absolutely. you 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 play in Dadgad predominantly, do you? Yeah, or, yeah, or I, I mainly. I, I think it was back in two thousand I tuned into Dadgad, and I never looked back. Um, even my electric guitars are tuned into Dadgad. So, oh really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, are you self taught guitarist then? JP or very much so, very much so. Like look, I mean, looking I, for lessons, yeah, yeah, very much so. And and I, I've people, yeah, that's the thing. People are always ask me that, you know, do I do lessons? And I, it's like I can't really because uh, I don't know what I do. You know, I, I don't understand half the stuff that I do. It's it's just <laughs> it just happens, and I I don't I don't have the process where I learned it. You know, because I didn't learn from somebody else. It's kind of figured out yourself yeah. as you go along. You know. Sure, I understand that too, um, but that's that can there can be a great freedom in that as well, you know. Absolutely, like, you know, watching I used to watch other people, like, asking them, you know, from time to time, what's that chord or how did you do that? Yeah, and, absolutely, absolutely. You know, so you're you're getting lessons that way. Yeah, so what's, I, I've um, done a couple. I've done a couple of workshops um, where which is a kind of different thing. I I, I kind of say that like I can't teach, but I can coach uh, guitar. If you know what I mean, like I can give you, I can sit down with somebody and give them tips there and then but like the, the weekly kind of teaching is probably wouldn't work for me but yeah sure 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 right yeah i can do that all right but I, it's mainly for beginners I, I i like you know i have a sort of a seven a ten week course generally of bringing them from scratch right. to being able to play songs and i i i, I do that I, I do that from time to time um here in here in ghent or up in ghent in belgium um at a, at a course that i do and also, of course the, the the private lessons but I do. I started doing group teaching, which was kind of a weird one because everyone yeah. was on a slightly different level, and that's that's a weird one because you're trying to bring beginners to a certain place, and some of them are better than others, and it's it's a strange. The teaching is a strange thing. You need a particular, is, as you said, headspace mentality, Absolutely. yeah, to to do that. But um, yeah, but that's it. That's how I was. I, I learned the same way as you did. Just yeah. asking people, you know, got some lessons at the beginning, and then moved to that guy open tunings. Yeah. Nowadays, of course, it's a lot easier to go on. On online and, and find absolutely. out what you need. You know, we had we had we had to get books and CDs. Absolutely, and, absolutely. You know. like when I when I first came to Ireland, um, I I had a, like a little bit of knowledge of Irish traditional music, but I not a not a great extent at all. And like, but I was very aware of it as well. So like, I got the you know mm. the O'Neill's One Thousand and One. And I, I went to Carter Records and spent way too much money on a big pile of CDs and locked myself in a room <laughs> for six months and. That's how Just we learn, you know. I mean, wow. amazing too. Yeah. Uh, and and, and uh, going back to Slitter again, then in the, in the traditional Irish circuit, it yeah. does that band form out of some of the sessions you were doing? Is that how it happened? Or no, no, I was playing. With no. a, you know, I was playing a different band, and Slitter's been going since two nine, 1997, I think. Uh, um, yeah, and. I was playing with a different band that was kind of, it was coming to the end of its career, but I, I, was, I was, we were doing a sound check in a, another bar here in Temple Bar and uh, Des just walked in. I said like, you're JP, aren't you? I said, yeah, I, do you want to do a gig tomorrow? <laughs> I was like, okay. And that, so I went and played a gig with them and um, they said that, look, actually our guitar player is leaving. That If you're interested, just to join the band. And I was like, well, sure, let's give it a go. Maybe a few years. And, that's twenty three mm. years ago. <laughs> wow, and the rest is the says history. Amazing, yeah. what a story. <laughs> cool. That's a great way to. Mm. That's a great story and a great way to, to 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 form a band just yeah. like that. Just do you want to do a gig? Yeah, jump in with yeah. us and then 
exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's very cool. So you have the you got the album coming out anyway after the summer, probably. Yeah. Um, your your solo thing. I have I have all your links down below. You also made a Brilliant. before we go. We you also I noticed you also made a very cool little uh, Spotify playlist of indie yeah, folk work- artists, which is really cool. Yeah, I'm working on that at the moment, and it, it's it's it again goes back to the same thing that I said about the songwriting before. I, at the beginning of the year, I kind of went like, okay, playlists seem to be uh, something that works uh, if you do it right. But it also, it, it gives me an excuse to go and discover um, more music, and especially the kind of music that I normally wouldn't come across. Uh, because you have to do a bit of digging. You have to go and look for, like, you find some some cool independent artists, and then you kind of look at their followers, and you start, it's, it's, it's yeah. all, like, connected. And uh, you start yeah, digging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really enjoying that process as well. And uh and mm. you, you get you get to talk to a lot of musicians, which is it's really really cool. And I, I think that's especially singer songwriters. You can you can get trapped into this headspace where you think that you're alone, and you know, you, it's almost like you're battling against everybody else. But it's not at all. It, it's if you can become part of that that community, uh, I think that's where you're going to really really start to growing, and, and that, that's when you start adding value to the community as well uh, in in more ways than just one. And Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's that's where that's what sh- music should be. It should be connecting people, and you know, it yeah, should be that's community. what we're trying to do. Absolutely, exactly. You know, what exactly. We're trying to do that, that's what you you've been doing for a long time, and yeah. yeah. It's but yeah, like I think, as you said, yeah, and I mean, I, that that's that that's the thing. Like, I mean, what else? Yeah, but Mom, I've been I'm trying to work this year again a lot more on the YouTube, so I'll hopefully get something out roughly about a once a week. But again learn from past mistakes i'm not putting the pressure on myself so if if it doesn't yeah, happen it next week it's okay um yeah but yes the, i'm definitely going to be bringing the vlogs back because i do have some uh, major major life changes on the way um which i can't talk about just yet but uh yeah no problem but but you know we might uh, we might reconnect when uh when, when we can yeah talk, you know uh, yeah sure i'll definitely uh share a, a vlog or two once you're yeah, exactly. You know, once well, I mean, you, you, once once they get up and running again, for sure, uh, for sure we will. Um, and of course, you got a, a, a you have a video coming out of tomorrow as well, have you? Yeah, yeah. I, I released, I, I, released yeah. I released a couple of songs on the Spotify there, um, three different cover songs, um, two last year and one this year. And the last one is the "Say Something" by A Great Big World. And I um, again trying everything differently and I, I i did a live recording of it here in my my living room and uh nice made a video of it. hopefully hopefully it'll, it'll look good to other people's eyes as much as much as it does to me and uh yeah yeah we look forward look forward to seeing yeah. that so that's tomorrow and uh yeah so we, we we covered all the big news then the life changes and the, uh, and, and, the and the music stuff i think we did I think we did. I'm gonna yeah. have to look back. We may have. To, I may have to chop off some of the frozen moments here, but I'll do that uh, in Absolutely. the next day or two. Uh, and we, it was very, very nice talking to you and and, and right, catching you. up with you, Jippy. Really was. And I uh, hopefully either in Dublin or in Belgium or somewhere down the road, we'll we'll get to. Uh, we'll we'll, 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 we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> we will. That's that's that'll be very cool. Uh, but in the meantime, the very best of luck with everything. JP, Thank you. Thank great you. work. You're, you're writing great songs and doing great work. And uh, the best of luck with all the all the gigs with uh, Slitter and all your solo projects. Thank you very much. And, and also best of luck with this channel because, I mean, I, I think you're putting up some really, really wonderful content and looking forward to watching them every week. So it's uh, I, I think there's something... Uh, you got something going on here. Keep it going. Uh, give it a go. Thanks very much. <laughs> I, I enjoy doing it. And uh, yeah, I, I really do. It's it's a it's Good. a fun fun thing to do. It and comes across you know, to, to connect to connect yeah. and to uh, hook up with all kinds of musicians either here in the studio or little things like this from time to time. But right. anyway, right. we 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 we'll keep uh, we'll keep the flag flying as they say, JP. We will. And uh, mind yourself and uh, I will. Good luck. Best of luck with everything. Same to you. Same to you. Slancha, bye. Slancha. Now. Folks, that was JP Callio uh, from Finland, living in Dublin. Lovely to talk to him tonight. With a few technical issues, but I'll try and edit some of those out. Uh, so when you're re-watching this, they should be a bit cleaner. It should be a bit cleaner. Thanks to all the live chatters that came in there as well to say hello to us on the on the on the live feed. Tomorrow night, Monday night, and every Monday night, eight o'clock is the songwriter show where I uh, 
play back some videos from my own archive and from uh, uh, singer-songwriters from around the world. Come and join us if you could, 8 o'clock every Monday night. And uh, these, this is Two Heads, One Heart. It's a more sporadic thing. But uh, keep an eye on the social media at The Rural Room for those. And uh, you can follow along there whenever they do happen. Uh, always good to have you with us. Uh, in the meantime, check out a couple of these videos. That I'm hopefully going to flash around the screen here. And uh, check out the channel. Give the video uh, uh, a thumbs up for me if you would, folks. It helps a lot. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe. It doesn't cost a thing. Helps the channel grow. All that, all that good stuff. And I'll leave any comments. Please feel free to do so for JP or myself. Lovely talking. JP Callio is the man's name. His band is also called Slitter. Got two great projects uh, happening there in Dublin. Check them out. Links below to everything. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.